To help us all practice social distancing, your Uber Eats order can be left at the door. Just choose the Leave It Door option at checkout for a no-contact delivery. You can even add special instructions like Leave In My Lobby. This can help protect yourself and your delivery person while flattening the curve. Delivery people are working extra hard right now doing critical work to support your community. Please show your appreciation with a tip, as a little kindness can go a long way. Try the Leave It Door option today with any order on Uber Eats. Hey, I'm Andy, and I started Harry's, the shaving company that's fixing shaving. At Harry's, we keep it simple. We make sharp, durable blades and offer them at honest prices for as low as $2 each. We obsess over quality so much that we do crazy things, like buy a German razor blade factory. So give us a try with this special offer. Get a Harry starter set with a five-blade razor, weighted handle, shave gel, and a travel cover. All for only three bucks with free shipping. Just go to harrys.com and enter five at checkout. That's harrys.com, code five. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today I have Melissa Ruiz. She is an entrepreneur and um, we're going to talk about her past and how she went from a six-figure position doing her thing in corporate America to following her passion and starting her own business. So welcome, Melissa. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure here to serve and just literally just talk about the experience of it all, which has been really transformative. So i uh, just here to shed light on all of it. Nice. I love it. So how did your career as a TV producer start? So let me just say, um, Melissa was a former MTV VH1 TV producer. And, um, you know, I want her to tell us a little bit about how that all came together. Oh, my God. Uh, I just did a video about this. But actually, the truth of the matter is, is that when I went to school, I got a degree in uh, TV and journalism. And I was actually picking my career based on the money I was going to make. That sounds really vain. And just like stay with me. So you guys totally get where I'm coming from. I went to school and I think I'm not the only person that didn't know what they wanted to do. And I truly didn't know what I wanted to do when I was 18. 18, 19 years old, but I figured, hey, why not? TV seems fun, right? Like it seems easy. So I ended up getting this whole degree, fast forward to landing my first job at MTV and just really busting my butt and behind and hustling for 10 years, selling shows and working my my tail off as a producer to finally realizing that holy crap, like I created this whole life for myself that I actually didn't really enjoy. Mm, And I think that was really one heart wrenching for me Two disappointing three, a lot of money I spent in school and getting a degree. And I really needed to dig deep as to who am I? What did I want to do? And what was this next phase of my life going to look like? So After 12 years of working in TV, I one day up and left. I went to Morocco. I did a yoga teacher training program there. And I just truly never went back to that desk. I just decided. Stop right there. Yeah. (laughs) So first, I want to take a step back to um, where you said that you picked your career based on the amount of money you make. I love that you said that because I feel like that is so real. And I feel like a lot of young people have this misconception about just chasing money. Like I've, I talk to a lot of young people. I have a, a young son and, you know, it, it seems like they all just, oh, I just want to make money. I just want to get money. I just, you know, whatever is going to give me money. That's all I want. It's like, 
hold up, <laughs> there's more to life than just money. Even people who are a little bit older who are working, it's like they're constantly trying to, oh, well, I hope I get a raise. I hope I get a raise. That's all I want to get is I want to get this raise. It's like, are you even doing the work that warrants a raise? Uh, do you, you know, like, should you be paid what you think you are worth or what you want? So what made you feel that, you know, you, was it that you just didn't have anyone saying to you like, no, honey, look for something that you love. Because I, I feel like when we were growing up, I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I know no one was saying that to me, not even at school, <laughs> not at home. So I find that that is, there's a big lack in people really promoting you to, you know, dig deep and look for what you enjoy doing. But what really, can you remember what was driving you to just go for money? Was it just a lifestyle or was it what everybody else was doing? What do you think, where do you think that came from? Yeah, I think it's society. Mm. I think it's what I thought was normal. I think I was conditioned, not only for myself, but I think most people are conditioned to believe that money will equal happiness, right or wrong. Like, yes. can, we, can I get an amen? Yeah, right? like, amen. <laughs> people think that money is what makes you happy or that buying the house will make you happy or that a husband or a wife or the Louis bag or the red bottoms or it's always something outside of us and I think for me I really bought into that I mean it was coming from my parents my parents who are immigrants to this country my dad served in the military he was a political refugee from Cuba worked super hard to provide a life for us here my mom was from Ecuador and also you know just hardworking, stay-at-home mom raised four kids and for her I think that's what success looked like to them it was money it was a house it was go to school get an education and when I was going through all the stuff and even in my education it was the same thing right it was like work hard get a promotion do more you'll get recognized go above and beyond like basically sell your damn soul and like somehow some way I'm gonna reach some level of happiness right and I realized that that's just simply not true Mm. Because I did all the things and I checked off all the boxes and I actually got married, then divorced, bought a house, then sold it, had the career, left it. And I had to go through all of that to realize what makes humans happy. And furthermore, what does Melissa find happiness and joy in? And my conclusion to all of that was in all the simple things. It was in really coming back to myself, really coming back to my purpose, my calling. And I had to do a lot of exploring to figure that out because most people, and for your listeners, like, I want you to just take a moment now and tap in and ask yourself, what is your purpose? What is your calling? What are you supposed to be doing outside of your job, outside of the role, outside of being a mom, outside of being the husband, the wife, the employee? Most people don't know. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know what that looks like because that's what we're conditioned to believing in. And that we are this exterior version of ourselves and that everything outside of us will make us happy. But in my discovery, in my practice, in yoga and meditation and in my journey that I've come to self-realization and awareness, I realized that it's not outside of us, that it's inside of us. Absolutely. So who introduced you to yoga? And what did you <laughs> love about it? Oh, my God, it was such a funny story. And this is why divine timing and everything happens for a reason. Um, I was working in TV and another TV producer was a yoga teacher and she had a class at 6am. She ended up being my yoga teacher, actually. But let me backtrack a little bit. At the time, she was a co worker and she kept asking me, hey, you should come to my yoga class. And I was like, Okay, cool. What time is it? She's like, you know, six in the morning. I was like, Oh, gosh, but she kept asking and I kept thinking, like, why the hell would I want to do that? Like, I have a lot of energy. I'm into CrossFit. I love working out. Like, I have no plans to do this yoga thing. But I ended up going and that's when the magic happened. Honestly, I started slowing down and realizing, like, wait, something is happening. Like, I'm feeling different. Like, I'm tapping in and I feel like a real awakening. Like, I feel like I'm getting closer to myself. So... In that, that's how it actually happened as the introduction. And I just kept going. 
and I kept showing up. And to be honest with you, nothing was happening in the beginning. You know, Mm -hmm. it was one of those things where your mind and your body need a minute to catch up. Mm hmm. Um, it's one of those things that I compare to like, you know, when you're about to, you know, you want to lose weight and you're working out and you're doing all the things, but you don't see the results. Right. Yoga is kind of like that. You keep showing up and you keep getting in these weird poses and you keep breathing. And then somehow, some way you start realizing that it's not even about the poses, that it's not even about the working out or the exercise, that it's not even an exercise, that it's literally you meeting you. Right. Without the roles, without comparing yourself, without wanting to be outshine anybody, without trying to be better than anybody. It's literally you versus you. And the more I discovered me versus me, the more I was able to let go of all the roles, of all the things that I thought I wanted to be or was supposed to be. Mm, I love that. So um, how did you make up your mind about leaving your six figure job, right? Because that's what everybody wants to make is six figures. Yeah. You know, that's like the big buzzword. Oh, I make six figures. <laughs> I know, I know. So how did you make up your mind about leaving your six figure job to pursue your passion? And what was your plan? Oof, I wish I had a plan. <laughs> I wish I had a plan back then. But you know what? Um, it chose me. Uh, there was no me deciding to do it one day or another. And this is why I really uh, believe that everything happens for a bigger reason. And that when we're supposed to be somewhere, everything will happen in order for us to get there. Meaning, I didn't choose to leave. It left me in a way. Mm-hmm. I took a really long vacation. I bundled up all of my vacation work days to about 23 days. And when I went to Morocco and I became a yoga teacher, I was still working. I was I was still employed. But what happened was is that while I was there, I kept thinking like, man, I don't want to go back to work. Like, I wish I could just do this. Like, I want to do this. I want to do this. And I just kept saying that over and over and over. Well, lo and behold, when I came home, I missed my flight. And when I missed my flight, I went to email my boss and my boss was like, you don't have a job anymore. Mm. So I love to tell that story because I feel like there's a lot of sometimes guilt, a lot of shame when people leave us or when things slip away. But know that that is the reason and the thing that you need to be doing, because sometimes we are not able to do it on our own. Yes. afterwards it was really interesting I got offered another six-figure job and I did it for a little bit and that job I ended up leaving but the first part was really important and I really want to stress that because the first part I wouldn't be where I'm at now if somebody didn't fire me and -hmm. if somebody didn't let me go because I myself wasn't like strong enough to do it for myself and that's what happens Yes, I so believe that. I believe that sometimes when, like you said, you get fired, it's because you needed to leave that place. But God is like, this person is not listening. They just don't want to leave. I'm going to have to do it for them. (laughs) And then something happens, you get laid off or, you know, whatever they come out with. But it's like the universe forcing you to move to your next chapter because you are not taking that initiative on your own. I feel like those endings are beginnings you know oh yes can we please just put that as a hashtag those endings are beginnings and it's so beautiful and it is and I think I struggled a lot um personally because of it and I think many of us struggle a lot because of it and I'll just put this into context you know when that boyfriend leaves you or that girlfriend leaves you we struggle and we say what's wrong with us why did they leave and it's not that why did they leave is we overstayed our Mm. stay yeah. You know, when our bosses fire us, it has nothing to do with us, is that we have overstayed our stay. When things hit the fan and things feel like it's so out of control, and why am I still in this situation? Things happen to us for a reason. It's like we have to go through that in order to get to the other side. And it's painful and it's hurtful and it sucks. It really freaking does. But it has to happen in order for us to learn. Unfortunately, we are human beings that learn through experience. Yeah, absolutely. People are always online selling how easy it was for them to go from 
working for someone to doing their own thing and now I'm an entrepreneur and buy into this and I'll teach you how to do it for $2,500, you know, blah, 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 blah. I want you to share some struggles with us about this transition from employee to entrepreneur that you experienced. Lots of tears, lots of crying. Um, I know there's so many people that I see online that are crushing it. And I have now built another six-figure business in my online um, entrepreneurship in under seven months. And I will be lying to you to tell you that it was easy or like it, it wasn't. It was a lot of pain behind it because there was a lot of pain in creating it you know there was a lot of shedding of my own identity of who I was to this new person of who I was becoming and that journey isn't easy and anybody that says it is is just lying it takes a lot of inner work to be an entrepreneur see sometimes at the very beginning of my journey I would say like two or three months in I remember clearly vividly telling myself why don't I just go back to my job, right? Like I have three other offers on the table where people are wanting to pay me six figures and I don't have to have the proof of a, I don't have to have the burden of carrying a business or hiring people. Like it's easy to work for somebody. Like it's so easy to work for somebody. Think about it. Like you just clock in, you clock out, you do whatever you want. Maybe you do the work, maybe you don't. Um, you like mess around and, and it's fine. Being an entrepreneur is freaking hard. You're yeah. responsible for you. You're responsible for other people. You're responsible for your clients. So I think there's a lot of honoring that I do when it comes to my business. I honor me, my clients, the money exchange, what we're doing, what we're building. And I never um, think it's small. It's big stuff. Mm. It's big, important stuff that I do and that they do. Okay. I can respect that and I can appreciate it. Um, but I just don't, I feel like there's with social media, it's so easy to, you know, misconstrue what you see. And I oh, feel yeah. like, you know, there's a lot of, you know, fallacies yeah. <laughs> online and people are being, you know, baited into thinking that, you know, you can quit your job and make and make six figures in, you know, like you did se se seven months or whatever. And I but just not everybody. Right. And I think it takes a very special person to be an entrepreneur and to have a turnaround like that so quickly, because it takes a lot of work and dedication to grow a business. And I'm learning that myself because I have some side, you know, um, ventures that I'm working on. And the other day I sat back to myself and I was like, I'm not really putting as much as I probably should into this to make it as successful as it probably could be, you know, and you have to be real with yourself like that you know, you have to have these type of evaluations and, you know, think about what you're doing. And a lot of people just, I don't know, they're just not there. So. Yeah, I think there's a, there's one thing I want to just point out that you said that was really, really key. And I want people to really get the message. Yes. There are so many people online faking it. Mm -hmm. And there are so many people online that are selling people a dream yes. that they're not even living. And that's not right. And God bless their soul, because that's something that they have to deal with. And they have to figure out and dig deep on why they're doing that. And I will tell you that when I first started my entrepreneur journey, I didn't get to six figures uh, on my own. I hired a coach that was $20,000. I invested huge, like I invested so much that it was so scary mm -hmm. that I had to move. So when I see people that are not reaching their goals or they feel like, oh, my God, that's so out of reach, like that can't happen, it could. But my question is, how invested are you? And have you ever made a scary ass investment that will make you triple and quadruple that 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 you've invested? Because that's what makes people move. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not the. Let me just see if I can do this or maybe let me just work hard. When you have a real, real deep reason why you're doing what you're doing, 
you have to keep going. You ha- it's like the goal is here and there is nothing stopping you. There is only tunnel vision. And it does take a special kind of person to execute that. Because why? Fear comes up. Imposter syndrome comes up. My next door neighbor is doing it faster than me. They're doing it better than me. They're doing it with other people. You know, there's so many things that come up that when I say you have to do the inner work, you have to do the inner work. Like there's no way that you can build these empires and these businesses and just say, oh my God, I have all, you know, I have this product, everybody buy it. It doesn't work like that. Well, what happens when somebody doesn't buy it? How are you going to feel? How does that make you feel? How are you going to show up? You know, so all these little things really, really, um, it takes, it takes a toll on you and it takes a really special person to be guided, to be taught and, and to not have the ego because I, I definitely was there too, where I felt in the beginning, like I already know what I need to know. Like I'm a, I'm a TV producer, like there's nothing, nobody else can teach me. And I had to really step down and say, no, like, I don't know this area. And, and I, 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 I want to be teachable. Right. I want somebody to teach me. I want to learn. I want to learn from the expert. Yeah, we definitely have to always remain teachable. And I know that's something that, you know, as human beings, we all struggle with, but definitely have to maintain that. Um, so yoga is a very popular exercise. Um, yeah. <laughs> did you feel like you had to sell something different and unique about yourself or your business to kind of jump in the arena with all of these other yoga businesses and studios? Yeah. That's that's a really good question. And um, I'm glad that you asked it. Thank you. Not a lot of people ask that. And, and that is really real. Um, but here's the beautiful answer is that I never plan to have this business I never planned to sell anything that had to do with yoga or meditation I never planned to be an entrepreneur I never planned to leave my job and and become anything my only plan was to heal myself and that's how this started I only wanted to figure out what made me happy and I only wanted to understand myself more fully and because of that I became a student of yoga And I became the student of meditation. And because I loved it so much, I went to teacher training. Because I almost I was convinced that one person, that one girl that told me to go to the class with her actually had a teacher training program in Morocco. And um, I didn't want to go. I was like, no, I'm going to lose my job. And of course, I, I did lose the job. But I ended up going. And the thing that that taught me was is that even then, I didn't want to be a teacher. I only wanted to go to keep doing yoga. But when I came back, you see, this is how things happen accordingly. And we're always placed in the exact thing and the people and the places that we need to to get us to the next place. I never wanted to be a teacher. But guess what? When I came back, I had the certificate. So I started teaching. And as I started teaching, more people started following me. And as I started starting, more and more people started following me. I started gaining huge popularity where people, my classes were packed. People couldn't fit in the classes. I was only getting paid like $10, $15, right? Like nobody was getting rich off of doing this. Like they didn't even have a social media. Like I went from 300 followers to like 10K, but that I, I didn't plan for that either. It just happened. And in it just happening and in more and more people wanting to spend time with me and take my classes, then that's when I created my very first product, which was yoga and meditation to have it more accessible to people. So I started recording myself and I priced it out way too low literally like just a couple a few hundred dollars just so that more and more people can come to my class and from that it grew and then from that people wanted me to teach them how I did the course and then it became a business uh, mentor so you see like everything keeps evolving because I keep evolving but the plan was to just heal and that's still the plan That's always the plan every single day. How can I wake up? How can I be a better person? How can I continuously heal unhealed parts of myself? Because we all are unhealed. There's all, in all of us, we have the yin and the yang, the positive and the negative, the feminine and the masculine. We all have these dualities to to ourselves. We all have a little bit of good. We all have a little bit of bad. That's great. I agree. We definitely do. And I love that things are just like, 
unfolding for you and coming together seamlessly because you are on the right path that you know you're you're doing what you're supposed to be doing so things are just aligning as they should be and that's what it feels like you know a lot of people always ask me what is alignment what what is that why everybody keeps saying like not in alignment you know what's divine timing this is what it means it's not something that you can define it's something you need to experience Mm -hmm. it's like god like, how do you explain God? You right. can't explain God. You have to experience God right. to believe in God if you believe in God, right? And it's the same thing with these terms. How do you know what alignment is? How can you find it? How can you teach it? You can't teach it. You have to, it's like it's like getting on the right track. Once you're on that right track, you know, because the energy keeps pulling you forward and things become easier. Things just get handed to you. Opportunities just keep coming up and and it's the less resisted path. It's the one that feels closer to happiness. Yeah, that's a great way to explain it. I love that you just said that. So what has been the hardest lesson that you have had to learn as an entrepreneur? I'm going to relate this back to um, yoga. As a yoga teacher, I, I always tell my students and encourage my students to not look to the right or left and to not worry about what anybody else is doing. Because sometimes you have students in class that even though I tell them downward facing dog, they're in a headstand and they're doing whatever the hell they want because they can do it. Maybe it's ego, whatever. It's their own practice and they're showing up doing whatever they want to do. And see, life and entrepreneurship is a lot like that. If you keep looking to the right and the left and what who's doing what and what other person is doing this thing online, you're going to get sidetracked and you're going to start comparing yourself. So I think the biggest lesson is to keep my eyes, my eyes on my own map, right? To keep my eyes on my own business, to keep my business here close to me. So that way I'm not constantly looking to the right and left and over my shoulder and worried about what somebody else is doing. It doesn't matter because they're not me and I'm not them. And I don't have the beautiful gifts they have and they don't have the beautiful gifts that I have. That what I have is enough and what they have is enough. And that we're all equal and that there's so much room for so many more people. That's right, girl. You better stay in your own damn lane. (laughs) Yo! Listen. It's important. I think so many of us um, check on other people, right? What is so-and-so doing? Well, well, what did they post? Well, what's going on in their business? Mind your business. Mm -hmm. That's my biggest advice, and that's the biggest lesson I learned. Mind your business. Mind your business. Do your own thing. Don't worry about what so-and-so is doing. Half of it is fallacies, right? So, like, it's all based on perception, what people are posting, how real or not real it is. But you can only worry about yourself. That is my motto in life. It's so funny. I'm doing my first um like speaking at Podfest and that's my yeah. topic, staying in your lane while podcasting, right? Because I really <laughs> <laughs> I really feel like you have to do that in life in everything that you do because if you don't it, it, it's so overwhelming, you know? Um what was I going to say? Oh, and I am that person in the yoga class that's looking around because I never know what the hell I'm doing. And the instructor's always calling out these poses. And I'm like, uh, I don't know how to do that. So I just look around. But it's so funny because, like you said, some people are doing um downward dog. Some people are doing the baby position or the fetal position. Like, people just do whatever the hell they want to do. So yeah, do whatever they want. And it's good that you have that awareness of what you're doing. But as a yoga teacher, I will say that you are already gifted with all the wisdom that you need to know that even when you show up to a yoga class and the, and the teacher is speaking in Sanskrit and she's talking about Chaturanga Dandasana and she's saying all these words that you don't know, the more you can just show up and tap into your own intelligence, your own inner wisdom, your body figures it out. And that even when your body doesn't figure it out, it doesn't matter because it's not about you getting in downward facing dog or doing a headstand. It's about you just showing up and noticing yourself noticing how you react, noticing if you're getting overwhelmed, noticing if you're criticizing yourself. That is the lesson. The pose is the gateway. The pose is the door to your soul. It's showing you how you are reacting to yourself. That's the lesson. 
And that's why ultimately when a student comes in and they want to just lay flat on the mat or they don't want to do anything or they're not doing anything that I'm telling them to do, it's okay because they have to now observe how they're showing up. Mm. Yeah, I've seen that too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um, what do you look forward to doing the most every day as an entrepreneur? Like what's your favorite part of your business? Oh my God, thank you for asking that. What's my favorite? <laughs> There's so many things. Um, I really honor a couple of things. And, and I know a lot of people will say, you know, my clients and this and that, and, and I, I will get to that. But I think the thing that I honor the most as being an entrepreneur is the time that I have with myself. The space that I've created in the morning to just meditate, to just be, to really channel what I'm going to write to really just spend more time with myself. Um, see, being an entrepreneur taught me how to get back to me. Never had that. You know, I I was I thought that everybody just got up, brushed their teeth, washed, you know, washed themselves and went to work. And now that I'm an entrepreneur, I realized that that's not my life anymore. And that I can spend time with myself and I can journal and I can have a cup of tea and I can just be in quietness and stillness and um, it's my favorite time and it's something that being an entrepreneur provided for me and it's so beautiful and it may seem like, well, that's not helping anybody, but you know what, when we help ourselves, we help everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when we heal ourselves, we heal other people. And when we love ourselves, we love other people. So it's not so much about what we can do for somebody else, but what we can do for ourselves. Yeah. I like that. That's really yeah. nice because, let me tell you, me and uh, my coworker, we always talk about just <laughs> stuff like this. And I love that you said that you get time to just be with you and, you know. Yeah, and it's beautiful. The The second part is, you know, getting to see my clients thrive. But who is that serving? It's ser- serving the ego. You know, it's serving like, oh, my God, look at what my clients are doing. They're crushing it. They're killing it. I obviously, I'm so proud of them. You know, I obviously think it's such a blessing that they um, are attracting abundance and money in their business. I'm just always over the moon about it, you know. So it's it's a combination of both. It's a combination of the self-exploration, of the awareness that I'm gathering so that I can always be the student and also teach and also lead and spend time with all the beautiful, amazing, powerful CEO women that I get to mentor and that I really get to see them thrive. Like it's so rewarding. It's so it's beyond rewarding. It's like, I don't know, it's really hard to explain and to put into words. But when you see that client and you see success is defined very differently for people. When I see a client that, you know, makes 10k and it's only her third or fourth business her third or fourth month in business I'm of course so happy for her you know but when I see a client that is making zero dollars but I know everything it took for her to write that one post about where she came from and who she is I'm so proud Mm. they're both the same they're both the same I just get so proud when people step into their power yeah that's definitely got to be a nice feeling to know that you had a hand in that, you know? Uh, so tell us some benefits of meditation and yoga. Oh, man. Okay, so meditation is life. Everybody should do it. <laughs> so some benefits of meditation and yoga, I will tell you that meditation in the hierarchy of how close you can get to yourself and the awareness of how um, and why you're here is in meditation. Right. Because when we meditate, we actually are able to lower stress. So if you're somebody right now who's experiencing stress, overthinking, you can't sleep, racing thoughts, you're traveling into the future and back into the past. You don't know what presence feels like. And that's why you are experiencing stress. Meditation is the medicine for you. And I can tell you that all those things that I just mentioned, everybody experiences them. Right. This is not like diabetes. (laughs) Right. Right? Like everybody experiences stress. Everybody experiences overthinking. I'm talking about the whole entire world experiences this. So who is meditation for every single body, even for children? I Mm -hmm. teach meditation at a grammar school for 
kids that are in kindergarten all the way up to fifth grade. So meditation doesn't hold any specific ages. Like anybody can learn how to do this. The benefits of it is calm mind, relaxed. It's proven to lower your stress. It's proven to lower your cholesterol to bring back more presence and alignment into your life. And I think overall purpose. Yeah, absolutely. The stuff, the stuff, yeah, the stuff with yoga is a little different. Same stuff. But yoga really is, at first, yoga was only taught for men by men. So this is a practice that now in the West has become very popular for women. Um, but most people don't know that this was a very elite practice, spiritual practice, that people did back in the days in India for just the elite men. Mm. to again find more awareness and more closeness to themselves god and all the things now in the west we have made this really popular and almost like an exercise right it's almost like crossfit pilates yoga but the person who practices yoga will realize that the asana practice which is the physical one which people are the most familiar with is not just about the poses and it's not even an exercise it's like walking into church mm. it's that transformation that you get at the end when people are laying down in shavasana and they're crying and why are they crying if this is a workout because they're experiencing something like they're experiencing something profound and maybe it's that it's the first time that they are just laying there without any thoughts and maybe it's the first time that they're just being with themselves and they're noticing how that feels or maybe it's the only time that they get to cry by themselves and not be judged there's so many things and there's so many benefits and releases to both these practices they're very beautiful they're um for everybody and anybody and they're universal great i love the explanation of both so what are some toxins that we can cut out of our lives to put us on the right track Mm, I love talking about toxins. <laughs> okay, so toxins, toxic thoughts, okay? So toxic thoughts are probably the most lethal and brutal. And most people don't even think about this, right? They think about like, oh, it's a carrot that's toxin. No, toxic thoughts. I want you to eliminate toxic thoughts. Pay attention. And this is why yoga and meditation is so helpful because it teaches you how to bring awareness to these thoughts. How can you rid yourself of toxic thoughts? What does that mean? I'm not good enough. Limiting beliefs. I suck. They suck. Who am I? I'm not worthy. When you're talking basically shit about yourself, those are toxic thoughts. So release the toxic thoughts so that you can come back home to yourself release and get rid of toxic people <laughs> okay this is something these are easy easy peasy things you don't need to buy a course for this you don't need to read a book get rid of toxic thoughts by releasing and not holding on to the one thing get rid of toxic people it doesn't matter if it's your family member it doesn't matter if it means muting somebody online it doesn't matter if it's you can't talk to your next door neighbor you have the ability you have free will to not involve yourself in things and in people that are toxic toxic patterns toxic relationships going back to the ex these are all things that we can release lastly toxic products Really start paying attention to what you're putting on your skin. Pay attention to what products you're using. Pay attention to how much toxins literally they have that you are now ingesting. These are all three things and three principles that I really live by. I love it. And it's so crazy like how we talked about being in a certain place to receive certain things and messages just before I got on this call with you today, I was talking to one of my girlfriends and telling her how I just felt like maybe I'm not good enough. Maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this thing at work. Maybe this, this, that. And here you are like, get rid of those toxic thoughts. <laughs> so exactly. that yeah, is so crazy. 
Yeah, and that's going to be the most helpful for you because, see, it's in our thoughts that we create our reality and that we create the shape of things that we see in the physical realm. And I think people forget that because we're so involved in technology and we're so involved in, like, what is around us. But if you stop and you close your eyes and you get really still, you start realizing that metaphysically that our thoughts literally shape the things that we see. And that they literally come true. And that's how we manifest. When people say, like, how do you manifest? Well, that's what I tell them. Well, have you been paying attention to your thoughts? Because whatever you're thinking is happening. If you think you are successful and you embody that, you will be. If you think and you start dipping into these lower vibrations, that's what you're attracting. Mm. Our physical realm is only a a physical landscape of what's happening inside of us. Yeah, that's powerful. If you had to connect your past with your present, what would you say prepared you to be where you are today? Oh, my God. Okay. Um, So one, my career. I sometimes, I was just having this conversation with a friend and um, I was telling her how we're all moving into this space of consciousness and this in the space of accepting all aspects of ourselves. And that is the past. And that is all the places we've been. And the place that I've been the longest is a TV producer. I think that was a a place where I developed this self of worth, the self of who I was and what I thought I wanted to be. And in learning all of that in the past and being a TV producer to now taking all those skills that I learned and applying it into me being an entrepreneur, it's made me realize how all of it has just 180, like everything has come back full circle. And I realized that everything in the past was preparing me for this. All the times I was coaching people um, to get on stage, to tell their story, every time I was interviewing somebody to dig deep and figuring out why should this person be on TV, what's interesting about them, what else, how can I make them different than everybody else, I started to realize the other day, like, wow, I've been really practicing this for a really long time, and I've been sharpening this skill. This is not something that, like, hey, I just popped up and I made, you know, all this money in a short period of time, but, like, I put in a lot of work. I shed a lot of tears. I stood up working, you know, 10 hour shifts, 12 hour shifts on set. I I did all of the hard work and it's now led me to this. So I'm really thankful for that um, perspective. Nice. So how are you helping others to follow their dreams and how can one differentiate between a dream and destiny? Oh, wow. You're asking all the good questions. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So I help people create their dreams of reality because when people come to me, see, most of them don't have a vision. They say, I want this. I want that. I want to create six figures. I want to buy a house, but they don't know how to get there. So the thing that I bring to the table is vision. I help people get laser focus on their vision and I manually give them the steps to get there. I give them the exact roadmap. And I think so many people are missing that. They say, I want all of these things, but they don't know how to get there. You need to have somebody that has a keen eye and that knows exactly all the things they need to do to reverse engineer that dream. So what is the difference between a dream and destiny? Mm -hmm. Destiny will always forever be. Destiny is the thing that you cannot run away from. Destiny is really close to our purpose and our reason why our souls decided to journey here on earth, right? It has a mission. There's something that it needs to complete. There's something it came back for. There's a lesson. There is a thing that is pulling it towards the inevitable. That's destiny. It's something that you cannot outrun. A dream is simply a part of that. But it can always change, right? It was a dream of mine to become a producer. But that doesn't mean that that was my purpose. 
it was a dream of mine to get married in Bali, but that doesn't mean any that doesn't mean that I'm not going to get married somewhere else. Like these are all dreams that we have inside of us that manifest, but it doesn't mean that it's the end goal. And I think that is the thing that people miss out on the most. They think, well, I had a dream to be a doctor, so I lived out my life's purpose, but your destiny could be helping people in India and getting paid no money. Mm-hmm. You see how money doesn't mean anything. Your destiny will always tell you where exactly your soul needs to be. And your dreams are the things that we manifest here in the physical world that are almost like different aspects and different steps, but it's not the end all be all. Don't stop at just a dream. Love it. That was so good. So how do you define success? It's interesting. You know, I define success for me and my clients in two different ways. So success for me is being in alignment with my higher self, having, you know, as little resistance as possible, meaning staying away from doing the hard stuff. And that doesn't mean hard work. It means doing things that I know I have no business doing. It means doing things that people are telling me I should do. That's success for me. Where in this life, in this second chapter where I get to be an entrepreneur, I get to choose to not fit into the stereotypes of having to do something that's not aligning with my soul. That's success for me. Mm. And that's why I became an entrepreneur. Success for my clients looks different. You know, success for my clients and me looking at them saying, my God, I'm so happy for you, is when they do take those small steps and they do get that first client or they get somebody to pay them 50 bucks for their meditation or for their uh, mentorship, whatever it is. Like uh, That's successful to me because I know how hard they've worked. But for me personally, it's in, it's being in alignment and being in flow with who I am and who I always was and coming back to that, that's being successful and not being attached to the outcome, not being attached to the money, not being attached to what my clients are doing or not doing, but just really moving and operating from a place of honesty, of integrity. I love it, girl. So do you feel like you are doing your purpose work and and running this business? And if yes, what exactly would you define as your purpose work? Yeah, I do believe uh, I am doing my purpose work, but I think there's so much more. And I think it would be shameful for me to say, you know, I have know it all and I've done it all. I think there's always room for us to grow. And my purpose work is to share where I've been. Because that's what I, that's what I've been doing. You know, I've never, I've never claimed to know everything. I've never claimed to know the keys to the city and, you know, do these five things and you're going to get all the money in the world and you're going to have your dream, whatever. I've just been along the way, have been teaching people what has happened to me and how I've overcame it. So I taught people how I left my job. I've taught people how I got a divorce and started my life over. I taught people how I traveled the world, went to India, Thailand, and just, came back to my own awareness. So I've just been teaching people from where I've been. And my purpose is that. And I think, and it's not just my purpose. I think it's our purpose. Our purpose is to be the teacher and the student and to go back and forth and to be the vessel of when you learn something, share it with somebody. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So in sharing, I always ask my guests to share an oh hell no moment that has taught them something or changed their perspective on something. And of course, an oh hell no moment is a moment of shock or disbelief. It could be positive or negative, but it is a moment where you're like, oh hell no, this did not just happen. (laughs) So... (laughs) Oh man, can I have a few of them? (laughs) (laughs) Sure. Shoot, there's so many. Okay, well, one of them I already spoke about, and it was I got fired, and that was a huge oh hell no moment Mm -hmm. for me, where I was like, oh hell no, you didn't. I'm running your company. Like, how dare you? But I learned that I would never allow or let myself get fired again, and that's why I became an entrepreneur. Great, I love that. It was a huge oh hell no. And um, another oh hell moment was 
and I think a lot of people can relate to this. You know, I got cheated on. And I think that was a definitely like, oh, hell no, you didn't. I'm mm-hmm. going to kick your butt. <laughs> but it was definitely the catalyst to, it, it was like a mirror. It was like somebody literally put a big shiny mirror in front of me. And it allowed me to see myself for the very first time, probably. And it allowed me to gain perspective on how I even got there. And it was definitely, oh, hell no. Mm. Wow. Well, Melissa, it was amazing having you on the podcast. I learned so much from you today. You are an amazing spirit. And I want you to tell everyone how they can get connected with you. Tell us all of the things that you have going on so that we can follow along. Yeah, well, first of all, I just wanted to share my love and gratitude with you and for having me on as a guest and speaking and reaching to your audience. You guys can find me um, mainly on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most. I'm at TV Yogi and that's TV, obviously, because I was a TV producer. And then Y-O-G-I, I give lots of free business tips, yoga, meditation tips. I do all the healing and spiritual stuff. And you can also go to my website, I am melissaruas.com. Awesome. To help us all practice social distancing, your Uber Eats order can be left at the door. Just choose the leave it door option at checkout for a no contact delivery. You can even add special instructions like leave in my lobby. This can help protect yourself and your delivery person while flattening the curve. Delivery people are working extra hard right now doing critical work to support your community. Please show your appreciation with a tip as a little kindness can go a long way. Try the leave it door option today with any order on Uber Eats. Xfinity XFi is more than just fast. It's internet that gives you ultimate control. With the XFi app, you can pause the Wi-Fi at the push of a button. Can your internet do that? Learn more at Xfinity.com slash XFi.